Hi, I'm Chad Stanton, the host of I Can Do That. On that show, we use a lot of power tools where we make nice and simple furniture. But I also make furniture for a living, and I use a lot of hand tools to do that. One of my passions besides building furniture is collecting hand planes. I like to learn the history behind the hand plane, the company, the maker of it, the years, and so on. So I thought I'd show you some of my favorite tools right here. One that I find is really interesting is this Stanley 148. It looks kind of odd because you have two handles on it here. What it actually does is tongue and groove. You push it one direction and it will make the groove. You turn it around, push it the other way, it makes the tongue. This was typically used for making floorboards back in the day. However, I found a use for it today. I actually teach a class in using hand tools. And this is one of the main planes that we use. In fact, it's what makes the tongue and groove here on our sliding lid. Another hand plane that's used a lot and it's really easy to find is the Stanley 78. This is a rabbit plane where the blade goes all the way across with no fence or shoulders to it. This plane again, I use in the classes it not only makes rabbits, I use it to make this bevel for the raised lid. And you can see the same procedure is done for the next class where we have the raised panel on the door from it. So a lot of these techniques are repeated over and over. One of my favorite hand planes that I use every day is this one here. Now I picked this up for just 15 bucks at a flea market and it's what they call a Razzie style. What that means is normally this body would go all the way across but it's lowered here. That's putting the handle behind the blade instead of up on top. Now it may not seem like that big of a deal but it performs just great. The story behind the Razzie supposedly is a Frenchman back in the day was looking at the boats, the big ships, and what they were doing with the ships is they were taking out a lot of the decks for it, making it more nimble to turn the boats around during battle. For whatever reason, he put that connection together and lowered his hand plane. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. It makes for a good story, but it makes for a great working hand plane. A lot of these hand planes have a story behind them. Some of the stories are actually really sad and other stories are quite encouraging. For me, the best thing about these hand planes, especially the old ones, when I pick them up, I feel like I'm keeping that craftsman before me alive, just carrying on the tradition. That's why I don't say for me, building furniture is my job, I say it's my craft. The last plane I want to share with you, and this is the whole reason why I do the teaching series, is this hand plane here. This is one of many hand planes that were used to make stage coaches. There was a set that was used for making the body, more sets that were used for the chassis. The sad thing is, is no one really knows today exactly where this hand plane was used on making that stage coach. I even reached out to one of the oldest stagecoach companies still around today. They got in touch with their oldest living carpenter and even he sadly had no idea where this was used. See back in the day stagecoaches were replaced by trains which were then quickly replaced by cars and all those craftsmen well they just discarded this and so that whole trade that craft it just died. That's the reason I like teaching woodworking. I don't want any of these secrets to die like this hand plane. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little tour and I hope you keep watching more episodes of I Can Do That right here.